All right, so you should have almost completed your maze. Um, I haven't almost completed mine. I've done a bit more, but um, it doesn't really matter for me. Uh, you just make sure you do it. Okay, so remember always to press this crop button. So click on your sprite. You should rename this to player. Sorry about that. Um, and now let's just test out our game. Let's see what it looks like. So we can see, oh, I might need to make him a bit smaller. But here we go, it's working nice. So it's all working good. We can go through here because I'm a cheater. And here we are. But yours shouldn't be like that. In fact, if it is like that, you need to um, change it. All right, because it's really important. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to add an enemy that can chase you around the map and destroy you. What should I say? Kill you. Okay, so we're going to add click sprite. We're going to make this a simple circle. All right, there's no reason to make something really complicated to begin with. We're going to go with green. We haven't done green. Uh, we'll make it 60. Like that. All right, here we go. There is my green dot. I'm going to put him or her right here. Then we're going to go behavior. And we're going to add the pathfinder so it's just instantly going to be able to find our player every single time all right in fact this is probably a bit too too hard for our player let's put him over here so now we're going to go to our event sheet one and we're going to add a couple of events and if you get stuck just rewind it so add event system start of layout all right, so on start of layout, something's going to happen, and that is sprite. We need to change that to enemy, um, find path, find path, or just type this in here, find path to player.x and player.y. So you might be wondering, what does the .x and .y stand for? So in our game, just like in coordinates, like you've learned in maths, you've got your x, and you've got your Y, all right? So Y is up here, goes this way, horiz uh, vertical, and X goes horizontal. And it's every single object on here has an X and a Y coordinate. And so our enemy will be able to see where the player is going and how to get there. All right, so go back to event sheet one, then click on sprite. Then we're gonna go on fail to find path. Then another add event, sprite, um, um, on arrived, and one more add event, sprite, on path found. So we've got a few different logic here and we'll break it down. So if you try to find path, you can't find it, it's going to try finding it again. If it's already found the path and actually gone on the path, it's going to find the path again. So we want it to continually continue. We don't want it to stop. So then last one, oh, sorry, I'll say that again. We're just going to copy this, click on it, control C, click on here, control V, click on here, control V. One more action here is we're going to type in move along path like that. All right, now let's test out our game. Oh, so our circle is moving. It's going to come to the player. Oh no, this is pretty scary stuff here, guys. Oh, there we go. I fooled it. So it's, we could make the um, algorithm a bit more challenging. Whoa. So it's interesting to see how it all works. But we've added, we can add more uh, enemies if we want, but this is our standard enemy. See, it's coming for me. There we go. All right, it will not stop. It is very persistent. Oh, look, it stopped. <laughs> okay, cool. First step, we're gonna go back to our enemy layout one. We're gonna rename it to enemy. All right, we should have done that before. I'm a bit forgetful. Click on here. We learned a bit about collision polygons again, but in games, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Candy Crush, whatever you call it, there's a collision polygon. And it just means, like, if you touch here, 
it's going to detect if there's a collision. So we want to make this more circular. So just add a few more circles, double clicking on this yellow square. We'll add some more circles. There we go. Oh, that's good enough. So it should find it easier to navigate now. And one more step we're going to do is we're going to change the cell size to 20. Don't worry about what cell size is. Oh, here we go. So it should be a bit smoother now. It shouldn't be as jerky as it was before. So here we go. Oh, maybe we should change that a little bit. So it's all about tinkering, playing around with it. Maybe change that to five. So we're just testing it out. This is what we do. We, we test the game out. We make sure, here we go. It's looking good now. There we go. It's a bit dumb. So we can add more. Let's add another enemy just for fun. And then let's see what happens here. And then we'll move on. I will do one last thing. So here we go. We've got two enemies. Oh no, they're both coming at me. They're both dumb. We can we can make it more advanced, the artificial intelligence, but for our game this is pretty good. We don't need to really try any more. It is hard enough. We just need to add more enemy because we want it to make it harder. One more step is we're just going to restart the layout when the enemy hits the uh, player. So player. No, back, we'll go back, add event, enemy on collision, so when the enemy hits with that collision polygon, remember, player, we're going to go add action, system, restart layout. Now let's test the game one more time. Nope. Oh. It's too sensitive. We need to change this sens sensitivity. Click on enemy a little bit. Uh, change cell border to 10. That should be fine now. Yeah, there we go. We can just play around with that. But now it's all working fine. Good work. All right, so you can add some more enemies. Uh, you can do whatever you want, but we'll continue um, in the next video. Will be um, coins, making individual coins in the game. All right, good work.